Hello, people! Welcome to another fantastic weekend! Eh, fuck it. Not, nothing really fantastic about it. But anyway, I'm here, I'm Dave, I'm Daveyverse. Davey, Daveyverse, you know, you get it? It's my sort of world, I talk about shit I want to talk about. And most of the shit I'm interested in is sort of nerd culture, and this is no different. Oh, I got some dire stuff this week. So, stuff I've picked up for the week that's just dire. Uh, I think I'm going to have to start with the most obvious one. Fuck's sake. Read. Let's just crack on. I'm back, and this is Seth Rogen's Teenage New Ninja Turtles Mayhem Mutant. Mutant Mayhem. Uh, to a gender swap letterhead and ring nut. Yeah, if that was just it, I would be like meh. But. It gets worse than this. Wait, let's just get the elephant out of the room with. Sure, I've got a pop picture up instead of using that. Ah, fuck it. Use that for now. Two sec. April O'Neil. Wait, quick scans around here. Get April O'Neil. Extractive. Redhead. Right. I don't really care about the last two. Just keep them attractive. Is that so hard to do? And yet, Seth Rogen made a fat, dumpy lesbian. Wait, I bet you, I bet you, this YouTube channel, I'll turn my on in it if you don't have a lesbian scene with it. Oh, the sort of thing that fucking Seth Rogen will actually put in. Wait, let's just crack on. While well, most fans' attentions were understandably more focused on producer Seth Rogen's description of April O'Neil, uh, such as the race drop teenage new ninja turtle mayhem, it seems like uh, more members of the turtle cast are likely uh, received a modern update. And also, I'm not even that dismayed at the fucking artwork. It could be alright. But you get this messaging in. You're going to get gender swapping within it. And then Seth Rogen's even just come out and said he's changing stuff. It's not the same t same Ninja Turtles that I was used to growing up. Actually, saying that, funny thing. So I've talked about how I've pretty much abandoned uh, Western media for about a decade or so. But the only comics I actually bought back were actually the the Teenage Ninja Turtles. I bought uh, the last warning back because I was just hearing good things and I couldn't put it off. I was like, I have to grab it. So I did. If you want it, it's a good book. To be honest, I would buy it just out of sake of just having it. It's honestly a class book. Yeah. Uh, that's thing. I also loved the last movie as well. One of Shredder, Shredder, Shredder. The live application was actually quite good. Don't know how much it cost. Like, I think I lost money at the end of it. But anyway. Changes reveal in a series of uh, promotional images uh, released alongside the trailer, which announced that the actors participate, but not specifically their roles. It's a power. It appears that Ring and Leatherhead were uh, will have their gender swapped in a silver screen debut. Aye, so on, so forth. Ah, they haven't attached images. See the trailer, so the voices were different, like. So overall, I think Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is, well, Seth Rogen's Ninja Ninja Turtles are a lost cause. I've got to have to watch it though. I've got to have to fucking watch it. It's on power mode. Oh, it's on that fucking diabetes of your channel. Ugh. Natasha and Rose. Wait. So yeah, looks like it's getting changed. It would be nice to put the uh, nice of the released an image along with it, but yeah, well, ah nah, nah. this not yeah, see, it's disgraceful. I would say as as long as the story's good, I can adapt to it, but it can't really have it where a sort of yawo is dumpy and fat. It's just sending out the wrong sort of uh, signal. You need the virtues of 
eighty hour. To be honest, it should be what people would aspire to, and this does not inspire whatsoever. I know why they've done it. It's modern update, modern times. Ring nut, lever head. Honestly, couldn't care less. They're monsters. They're mutants. So, race swapping, gender swapping. Well, it can't be a race swap. A fucking gate having a fucking bat butt. You know. So, yeah. As long as the story's good, but I'm going to have to watch it for one, it is the tools, and two, it's going to be a disaster. I'm just going to have to hear, hear watch it. But, what do you guys think? I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Hello, people. Wait, I don't think I've done a Harry Potter one in a while. I think it's been a few now. So, there's talks of a TV show coming out. There's talks of redoing the movies. Just had Hogwarts Legacy. There's rumours that they're actually starting Hogwarts Legacy 2. Who knows? I'm still waiting for it to be on a Steam sale. I'm cheap. I'm just a cheap bastard, basically. But anyway, High Potter star Evelina Lynch says she wishes people would just listen to J.K. Rollins. So, she is Luna, I believe. Well, yeah, Luna Goodwood. I thought it was. And she spoke out about J.K. Rowling's be- before having a back while the other three kids, uh, Radcliffe, Grant and Emma, have all basically slammed J.K. Rowling's. Uh, once of ACR has sort of stood up for her. But I think she stood up for her in 1819 and she got slammed down for it. I'm glad she's coming back out. She was getting the courage to speak up about this sort of thing. It's honestly what I sort of needed to do as well. I wish I did it sooner. Hell, even if two or one person listens to this, I'm just happy. So, yeah, I think more people need to speak out about this. If I can at least talk to one person, that's totally fine by me. I'm not just shouting into the ether now. I'm shouting into the ether with a possibility of someone actually listening. So, I'm happy with that. But anyway... The High Potter star jumped into the defence of J.K. Rowling's. For years now, the author has caught controversy with her views on transgender rights. Like I've stated dozens of times now, J.K. Rowling's views on on transgender rights are the norm. She wants to protect women's spaces. It's what I want to do. I want to protect women's spaces. The only difference between me and J.K. Rowling's is I also want to protect men's spaces. But J.K. Rowling wants to let women in them spaces. I get where the argument was coming from. She was arguing the saying that uh, these sort of men's spaces, like uh, like popular places, like uh, what's that club called in uh, Parliament? They've got like a men's drinking club and stuff like that. And uh, St. Andrew's Golf Resort, where we're seeing that powerful men go to these places and they make decisions on the country. And basically, women were excluded from this as they were for men only social clubs. I, I got an argument, but the whole thing then came down to well, why can't women just enter these spaces in the local fucking community, like the, like the gentlemen's clubs and that? And it's just ruined me, uh, men's culture. We do need time away from broads. And. Basically, the chickens come home to roost. But I still stand by the views that women should still have their own their own spaces away from men, and that does include transgender men. Uh, not not trans- transgender women. How does this work? If you're a transgender man, is that a woman that's went to a man, and transgender woman is a man that's went to a woman? I think that's how it works. This is how I'll touch you about this bullshit. Oh, it's all fucking new speak. Yeah, 1984, you know. Wait, so the changing. The changing more than just gender, the changing of the language, for fuck's sake. Hate how my head works at times. Wait, and apparently they started in uh, June. They started way before that. Uh, she called out an article using the phrase people who menstruate. <laughs> Hell yeah, that was stupid. Who menstruates? Come on. We all know it's only one type of person. Women. 
This tweet divided Twitter users. Well, if you're using Twitter, that's sort of your own fault. I only sort of adopted it just for promotion. So let's just crack on where she actually steps in. Now that Luna Goodwood star Evena Lynch has shared view, uh, her views on the matter. At the time, Lynch deleted her social media accounts after saying in response to J.K. Wollen's initial comments, it's irresponsible to discuss such a delicate topic. That said, as a friend and admirer of Joe, I cannot forget what a generous and loving person she is. That's it. You can't... You've got fucking threats and fucking harassment for that? That's nothing. That's milk toast. I mean, I don't necessarily agree with it. We do need to discuss it. But at the time, I probably might have thought the same, to be honest. Given uh, how I just started this new, because we need to talk out about this. But well, Christ almighty. So she, all she's seen that she's a friend and that she's not a bad, a bad, a bad person and she wants to stick her head in the sand. And people forced her to delete her social medias for that. My God, Twitter's stupid. Lynch famously won the wall of Luna in Harry Potter and Oda Phoenix after writing to the author about her struggles with anorexia. I think I'm back. She was a bit. Uh, wait. Yeah, fair enough. Congrats to her. Yeah. Wallens responded with an incredible uh, wise letter while Lynch re recovered. In a new interview, uh, Lynch said she was very naive when she uh, dragged into the conversation back in. See? That's the way I'm thinking. I was naive back then. Probably on the same tr uh, train as I, to be honest, Nick. Uh, getting dragged into it. Yeah, she was kind of dragged into it. There was no need for the harassment, like, especially after I just finding out that was the whole comment she said. I didn't even know there were two sides. I had a view of like good and bad. It's not. I didn't have that. I was like thinking I don't really care. Just do what you want to do. Anyway, I do have compassion for both sides of the argument. I know what it's like to be a teenager who hates my body so much that I want to crawl out my skin. So I have great compassion for trans people and I don't want to add to their pain. Fair enough. You spoke about your anorexia. So you're probably a good source of information. Plus you're, plus you're a teenage girl to be fair. Come on. Uh, that, that research is going to more, know more about their... Uh, sort of self-preservation uh, about not preservation what's it ah sort of anxiety and that sort of stuff I can't think of a good word now yeah well I'll, that, if it comes to us I'll shout it like an autistic little screecher right she continued I do also think it's important that JK Wallen has been amplified the voices of detransitioners I had this impulse to go let all the stop talking about it and I think probably I'm a bit braver now about how uncomfortable the conversation is. Granted, I feel the same way I talk about this. Conversation is an uncomfortable one to have. Someone's always going to have an opinion. But I'll give you mine. J.K. Rowling did nothing wrong. Talking about it is not killing someone. We need to talk about this sort of stuff. The transition, like the, like the trans lobbyists going way too far they're bringing it on flipping young kids there's articles of them even saying that they want two year olds to decide their gender it's like no at least go through puberty first hit 18, hit 21 hit even hit 25 for all I give a fuck until you make this actual decision that will affect the rest of your life a hysterectomy will fuck you over there's no going back from that you can talk about getting in implants, but it does not work. Your body will be scarred from that point on. Lynch said that she was surprised by the continued backlash against Rowling, especially when she wrote her essay. It saw the author share personal details about her life. Yeah, I'm not surprised about that. Uh, the retarded left are just going to be... The retarded left. If someone screeches into... 
the ether. They'll scroll switch into the, the ether. Uh, it's not sort of tried to. I'm um, well. I'm trying to do this now. At least I can talk to somebody. If not, at least I can talk to myself and yap myself back. Hell, it's just fun. Wait, I just felt that her character has always been to advocate for the most vulnerable people in society. The problem is that a disagreement over who's the most vulnerable. I do wish people would just give her more grace and listen to her. That's honestly fair. I don't think she's stepped into this whatsoever. But people are whinging online and so on and so forth. Rollins last month dismissed worries that her standing on trans issues and gender recognition has overshadowed her legacy of Harry Potter. Flippin' hell man, Harry Potter is winning. The expanding Harry Potter world in both America and the UK. Hogwarts Legacy actually outpaced Black Panther. That's Honestly, I didn't expect that whatsoever. 12 million copies sold. Oh, that's amazing. They talk about redoing the movies. And J.K. Rowling, I believe, has the most airtight, secure contract in the fucking world. And whatever she sees goes. Mm, hope sh I hope she doesn't bend the knee and change it too much. If she does go down the route of remaking the, the movies. She might just do it out of spite. Just to spite uh, Radcliffe, Emma and Grant. I could... See a spiteful person doing that. I don't know if uh, J.K. Owens is spiteful though. No, see, just to get 10 minutes with her would be class. Just just to see what's going on in the head. For one, Harry Potter is a modern. is a, like, a, modern cl a modern classic. I don't think many people could object to that. Uh, I should be a good one just to have uh, a conversation with. But that's me. That's my thought on the whole issue. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Hello, hello, hello. Arrowverse creator regretful over DC show. Yeah. Yeah, so am I. I'm very regretful. Wait. Supergirl, first season good. Flash, first few seasons were good. Arrowverse, the first fucking, probably up to season four, five. Try to remember where fucking where the split and thing end. Wait, then you got Legend of Tomorrow. That actually quite liked the. Was it the second season where he dies, the captain? Forgot his name now. <laughs> uh, and then Batwoman. I didn't even attempt to watch that. Fuck me, I saw. Well, it was like uh, starting off with Ruby Rose, and it was like uh, when they were looking at the the, the back suit, and it was like in it perfect, and then it was like that it, that'll be perfect when it fits a woman, and from that point you knew what the shit was going to be. But anyway, with the Arrowverse coming to a close, the creator behind it has revealed that in some respects his time behind the wheel has felt like a waste of time. Yeah. Towards, I think I gave up after this on the second season of Supergirl. So I was like a few years in, to be honest. Daryl's verse was once thriving in a connected on screen universe that showed threads of inner between, between multiple shows Arrow, Flash, Legends, Supergirl, and Batwoman. Sadly, however, the display, uh, its days are coming to a close. The signs were long before it. It was official. Supergirl ended earlier within its sixth season and was followed by a cancellation of two of our long running DC comic shows of the CW. But was that because they were bought out or was that because they were shit? Meet me. In turn, out of uh, after roughly a decade of having worked on the massive adaptation of the DC Comics legend. The hard work was not bear any fruit. The hard work has not. Wasn't bearing was not bearing any fruit. Wait. That's just worded weird. The dyslexia there just read that wrong. The hard work was not bearing any fruit. That sounds better. Do I clip it? Eh, I can't be honest. Wait. In a new blog uh, posted on a personal site, our first creator, Mark 
Gohemen uh, got candid about how he cannot help but feel he wasted time working on the CW many superhero shows. Yeah, I feel bad for watching them. So then I enjoyed my time watching them at the time. It's just how they turned out. I, I couldn't f- I couldn't follow on. I think Infinite Earths was the last special I sort of checked into. That would have been fucking uh, decades. That would be a decade now. Well, it feels like a decade. <laughs> on top of that, uh, he also wrote the Averseverse Vixen, Legends of Tomorrow and Supergirl, also which he had also credited an executive producer. So, if you did this, you wrote this. Well, did you only do the first season or something? Or... Hang on, I missed a bit. For not familiar with his work, he wrote and produced uh, Stephen Amel Arrow, uh, which he then acted as a showrunner and writer for a handful of seasons. So he did a handful of seasons. I'm picturing it as the first good ones. Hopefully you are a good one. The piece starts out as... Fucking hell, man. We'll go call him Mark. They uh, shared how back when the CW... Big crossover event, Crisis on Infinite Earth. Was that the first one I watched? Uh, was being made. A friend of his claimed that uh, his phone uh, going off, ringing off the hook. Despite expectations, as he put in, Mark's didn't, uh, phone didn't uh, ring, in fact, whatever. What? The producer opened up uh, nothing that the five hour, six show TV event was a labour out of respect. Having used every resource and connection at his disposal. So, this is his words. Crisis on Infinite Earth made a significant impression on my psyche. It was more than a labour of love. It was a labour in every respect and project went into. Spent every ounce of capital I amassed in developing DC Comics related shows for War Bros. Over an eight year period, I called in every favour I used every chink I burnt every bridge I spent over ten thousand dollars of his own money fuck you hell that was sadly about the time I gave up on it but I quite like that crossover to be fair it was quite good so he goes on yet before Doctor Strange Multiple of Badness would uh, mainstream the concept of intercontinent uh, interconnected multiverses Crisis brought characters from the 1960s Batman television show, 1980s Batman feature, and 19s Flash, uh, the Smallville series Lucifer, Doom Patrol Titans, Swamp Monster, Green Lantern movies, Superman, so on. This goes on to Ezra Miller, uh, even reprised uh, the feature film as Barry Allen to meet the Arrowverse incarnate and played by Grant Gisson. No, sorry. This might be a bad take. But could these two not be swapped? Because I did like Grant's uh, Flash. I think he portrayed him well. You could see him give up about... F- There's the third series he sort of give up. That's when they start bringing in Wally West and... Uh, all the other ones started getting their own powers and he was put on a back burner. Aye... Uh, he then clarified his intentions that the, the words isn't there uh, to belittle Crisis on Infinite Earths in the slightest and he feels deep, great, deeply grateful for the response of fans. Fair enough mate, he did good work to be honest. Yet I do not mean to belittle whatever, I've just read that basically. Fans loved what I did, uh, there were tweets, that uh, there were posts, there were memes, there were much discussion and all of it I was and remain deeply grateful for it working with these shows we all remain ourselves that the opportunity of love was not hate it was a privy and not no matter what there were necessary any apathy it put bluntly mark declared uh, on a career level he really wasted his time yeah the way the show turned out and the way the series turned out, the way the show turned out, I can see it. It's not a good look. But if you can distance yourself from how it ended, 
See, I don't know because how many studios will now sort of pick it up. But CW's going down the pan anyway, so I think it's time to actually see if he can revive it or revive something of this. DC are desperate for cash. CW's going down the pan. If he can keep the woke bullshit out of it. Mark, if he can, see if he can restore this. The Arrowverse was great. It started off great. Make Arrowverse great again. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Oh, it actually fits in as well. Oh, it'll also fuck off so many of the left hearts. Wait, I'll leave it there. Catch you. Peace. Hello, party people. Bring it back to my first love. Well, that was. Yeah, so this is. I don't know, a second. So I got my first Batman in, in the 90s, but I got my first Star Wars in the 2000s. Prequels kid, yeah. So, yeah, being a prequels kid, I love the prequels. Sequels are still better than the, than the prequels, I'm happy to own that. But the fucking, what do you call these fucking seek fucking, ah, uh, the dire. Fucking Disney stuff style. Fucking killed it for us. Fucking Legends was class. And the lot of lore behind it. The comic books behind it. Ah, oh, wait. Anyway. So, Star Wars producer sues Lucasfilm over High Republic show The Acolytes. The Star Wars produced Carrie uh, McCoffey uh, has uh, filed a lawsuit against Lucasfilm over her engrossed firing. Uh, for the upcoming Disney Plus show, The Acolytes. Yeah, so I've heard about this. She basically got shafted. Uh, there was two job opportunities. Was it Paramount? Or Apple? Or Amazon? Mm, I can't remember. Basically had an opportunity to work on something else. And she chose this. They canned her after a few weeks. She tried to go back to the other one, and the other one basically she lost the opportunity. So, sort of hitting home this week, like, eh, little personal background. I was offered a job, took it, then I was being a bit greedy. I tried to push for some more money. There, eh, my place offers more money to stay, so I was I was being cheeky. I took the I took the cash. Then I tried to push for more cash and uh, they basically turned around and said no, they can't do it. So I'm now stuck. Ugh. By fault, I don't up to it. Wouldn't it be nice if the fucking agency told us that I didn't get the job like I was waiting there all week and I had to give them a phone call. But anyway, not the point. So this does come close to home a bit so probably one reason why I picked it up there. Uh, I heard about it midweek and I was really debating it's worth doing something on, but I love Star Wars and the Acolyte. I was sort of wary about it. Uh, Ando actually came out quite good in comparison. The uh, Mandalorians basically fell off a cliff, but that's a different story. Wait, Lucasfilm has been sued by producer Carrie McCarthy after being after her firing. The Star Wars Disney Plus show Acolyte Theatre of Star Wars has been a state of flux over the last few years. A string of controversial releases on the big screen, followed by... Wait there, are you owning up to it? Followed by box office failures of Solo uh, to the movies. That was stupid, that. Why did it even attempt uh, the Solo mo movie after it just killed him off? They've uh, been put on. Lucas pivoted uh, to the focus on Disney Plus TV shows. Uh, that's just dire. Obi-Wan should have been a movie. Mandalorian TV show. Andor should have been a movie as well. Read. Which has a... Uh, see, problem with Andor was, it starts off slow. So slow. I think that's because the movie script was what it was. They could have slowed the movie into it and made a two hour feature. And then there's just bits where it drags because they had to add extra stuff in. Uh, which are uh, proven remarkable, successful. Huh? 
uh, such as Mandalorian, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Andor, which have proven remarkably successfully. No. What the fuck? The Mandalorian. It's good. Successful because of Baby Yoda. I agree with that. Obi-Wan was a catastrophic failure. Andor was good because it's in next to Kenobi. Oh my dears. I thought by that you were sort of backing off but no no I still see you're still trying to shill. But even though they had uh, had their fair share behind the scenes drama a number of changes to di- direction one of these affecting the TV show with the Acolytes had been led by Lucasfilm being sued in April 2020 uh, not 2022 man experienced producer Kerry McCarthy known for the likes of Bola in security and House of Cards was hired to begin work on the Acolyte where an original Star Wars production have a public era setting I don't know about that. Read. Centuries before the prequel trilogy, two uh, two weeks later, uh, having passed on the uh, opportunity of an Apple, that was Apple Man, production of Sugar in a feature, in a favour of Lucasfilm. Why did you pick that though? Weird. So, hang on, let's skim over this. Ah, right. So, she basically passed over the job because she would have to relocate and she didn't like it. So, is that actually suitable grounds? I mean, a job's a job, so... I guess if she only had the one option, she would have took it. So, Disney in the wrong here? The time of lawsuit couldn't have been worse for the upcoming very moment. The studio prepares another pivot back to the big screen... May have a production includes Kevin Feige's Star Wars film, Work Squadrons. Say at least Star Wars is coming back to the big screen. Work Squadrons, if it goes off Legends, it could be class. Put it Star Wars as it's Disney. So I'm not holding my hands up. It. Ah! <sighs> you know, fucking nerd wants to go and see it. Oh, I don't know. <sighs> I guess I will. Wait, I guess I will. It's Star Wars and my inner nerd fucking uh, almost fucking killed us for, uh, if I was going to see another. Wait, only time will tell how the case pans out over Lucas and McCarthy, but it certainly casts a shadow, doesn't really. But it is what it is. And that's why I'm sort of worried about it. They produced comics for the era of the old of the old republic well the high republic and the comics are absolutely shit wait but other than that i'll catch you later bye hello party people wait if i had one recommendation if you want to get into the medium of comic books look at the indie platform but stuff like this is absolutely killing the industry well the mainstream industry is already dead diamond is long gone and i don't know if that's a blessing or a curse it was good to at least get one shot of one stop shop but the monopoly of the idea always is a bad idea and then again, it's now absolute chaos in the industry is from what I'm hearing. But anyway, this is about censorship and in and on the indie platform. I'm a massive supporter of sort of the indie stuff. Uh, it's actually the indie stuff that's actually got us back into Western media. Anyway, off that. After having trouble with Indiegogo, Shadow Bad in nearly every comic gate related project using the platform. Crowdfunder bans private uh, private America and plans to ban all other comic gate related projects. Well don't use that no more. 
See, in the go go, does still allow you to do it. You know, there are shadow banning, they still allow you to put your comics on it. But crowdfunding now, I'm guessing, is a no go site. Like GoFundMe, just stay off them. They're not really. Have I seen this come up before? Oh, it does look decent, like. Yeah, but I'm quite impressed with that, to be honest. Artworks, de artworks de de decent, the backgrounds are right. The colouring's decent. The shandow in with the blacks. Yeah. Right. Man, I'm, I'm going to have to have a look into this. The series begin. No, oh, yeah. This begins with a legendary comic book writer, Mike Bowen, and his book. Oh, read. Didn't that. Private America across three platforms, Indiegogo, Shadow Bannon uh, campaign, followed by Kickstarter, targeting and removing it. And finally, December 21, uh, Mike Bain's announced uh, crowdfunder has banned his book. Oh my dears, man. All these people are, are payment processors. So you go on, so you put your project riff on it. They host, like, basically. Would you like to fund this? And I pay for the book if I want the book. These crowdfunding pages should realistically have no sort of power to deny pretty much any project that comes on. The only ones I think they should realistically have are the e are the illegal stuff. Shadow banning, I'm not keen on it, but if you don't want this stuff on your homepage at least keep it off there so you can basically get people to the homepage but if people want to search for it they should be able to search for it and find it read after Baron came off the heels of his hit piece by the Daily Cost uh, alleged that his book is racist despite the main hero being a person of colour hey <sighs> yep they do that sort of stuff you know because of the article, uh, an online mob falsely reported the Private America campaign. The company caved, alleging Barons violated their terms of service. What terms of service? But Private America publisher Chris Bradley uh, made an attempt to speak with a representative of the platform crowdfunder uh, to plead his to plead that they allowed art to be made uh, without censorship. His results were not fruitful. And obtained a Zoom call with the company's CEO, David Botch. No, oh, has to be a David, eh? Well, I'm calling him David, not Dave. He doesn't deserve Dave. Wait. Well, the recognition that you can uh, lump everyone that belongs in a certain group together as being the same people, uh, Botch opened into a 12 minute video. Uh, wait. Unfortunately, Comic Gate has a reputation that it has. And if people are going to declare themselves part of Comic Gate, we cannot change Comic Gate's reputation. Even though we know that there are bad elements, they are just like there are bad elements in everywhere else. Our Comic Gate was harmless. There was some BS around it, but the people that were actually within it had no real. Uh, fuck it, I'm not getting into it. <laughs> The chill perspective of Comic Gate is problematic for us all. And the kind of where we have to leave it here, he stayed. So Comic Gate was about 15, 14. Followed with Gamer Gate. And I sort of just gave up by then. Should have stayed, should have fight. Regret that new. So yeah, man. The shadow and the bone structure. Even the intricate details. Definitely got to look uh, look to something like. Despite his words uh, regarding and not lumping everyone in belonging to the same group together and making negative judgments, crowdfunder is doing exactly that. Fuck it, sounds like it. Sounds like anyone who associates comic gear is not going to be allowed on crowdfunder and having hearing you properly. Basically, asked to clarify, uh, you are botch says. Doggo! Doggo. 
so what the fuck's going on here? So he's caught by the doggo. Then there's his partner. Then the same gear. So his partner going to slay the doggo. Then he kicks it. The interview continues with 10 or more minutes. Bart back, uh, back and backtracking, going to circles and gaslighting. Sounds like a typical shit. Read. You think it's wrong to expose crowdfunder bigotry in its uh, in the owner own words. Uh, I do business with vipers. <laughs> Fair enough. Don't do business with vipers. And so on and so forth. But hey, I'll leave it there. So crowdfunder is a no go now. Any go go still probably the best or the worst cases you can have. I still support a few indie comics on there. I'm happy to. See, the whole indie comic things as well has also been sort of died with uh, people putting fake ones out there where they've just basically been cash grabs. But this doesn't look like a case. There's other ones where I've supported and doesn't look like a case. I think Eric Jurai with Ripperverse probably did the best thing. But I know people don't have that sort of fun. I believe he put 200 grand of his own money uh, up, rip up for that. And I'm fucking grateful it paid off for him. But I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Hello, and thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more, watch more. If not, eh, at least like, comment, subscribe. It helps us out. Appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.